Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gaming is Dog here. Today we are going to be playing Until Dawn, a game I've been doing little let's play through with my beautiful wife. And I'm going to show you guys, just we're going to start a new story and I'm going to show you um, the tutorial or the introduction chapter. That's all I'm going to show this game because I think that really sums up the gameplay, the style of game you're going to be getting out of this. Um, what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to show you some of the interesting things you've got. If you've got a PlayStation camera... You can plug it in, and what it does is it saves some of the um, scares that happen in the game. So if you've got the camera on, you can see them. So I'm just going to show you. Unfortunately, these are all in the pitch black dark because we were playing this game in the dark, obviously. So you can't really see what's going on, but I think you probably hear me and my wife scream a little bit. So let's have a look. Yeah, that was just really the movement of the controller, as you see. But it is quite a nice feature. The shame is, is that, you know, this is a horror game, so you can play it in the dark. So, Until Dawn. What is Until Dawn? Well, it's an interactive drama. It's kind of in the vein of Heavy Rain. It's a PlayStation 4 exclusive, as was Heavy Rain was for the PS3. And it's a horror game. And it's it's kind of, it's based on, like, a traditional, you know, kind of like slasher film horror, uh, haunted house, a bunch of teenagers out in a cabin in the woods kind of thing. So we're going to start a new story, going to overwrite the existing one. That's fine. So start it. And it explains first off what the butterfly effect is. A tiny butterfly flapping its wings today may lead to a devastating hurricane weeks from now. Which is a big part of this game. This game's got um, loads of different endings. Like apparently, you know, maybe dozens or hundreds or whatever. And everything that you do directly, um, at certain actions that you make, affect how the game goes and how relationships progress so you're going to play this game as a series of different characters and um, they've all got their different personality sort of traits like friendliness loyalty how their relationships are to other people and apparently you know depending on how you manage the relationships amongst the characters could mean if a character helps someone or doesn't help someone um, like later on in the game as it were so, like, me and the wife, I mean, we put about a good two to three hours into this game. We got a bit far, and we really, really enjoyed it, and it was a lot of fun. We, we also really enjoyed Heavy Rain. Um, personally, she preferred Heavy Rain a little bit more, um, because it was more of a drawn-out story. One of the big things about this game, I think, is that it does do a lot of um, jump scares. I personally don't like jump scares. I find them quite annoying. This game sets up the jump scares very well though like you know they're going to happen and it is quite terrifying at parts really um, so we're getting to it now so this is sort of the opening chapter the opening prologue chapter and kind of sets up all the characters and what's going to happen um, oh my god I can't believe you actually did this don't you guys think this is a little bit oh come on she deserves it it is not her fault that she has a huge crush on my Hannah's been making moves on him I'm just looking out for my girl and So as you can see he's class pres doesn't mean he belongs to everyone. All the characters here are modelled on real life actors as you can see I, her I forget her name completely now she was in Heroes um, she was sort of the cheerleader in Heroes what is her name now I'm just going to have to google this now because me and the wife were debating about what her name was when we were playing I've completely forgot what her name is she's kind of um, she's not yeah. necessarily She's not necessarily like the main character of the game, because um, you can't play as everyone, but she definitely is there. Uh, let's have a look. What's her name again? Hayden Pante uh, Panettiere. I've probably butchered the surname. Mike? It's Hannah. Hey, Hannah. I, I think the audio of this game is absolutely amazing. I think the music... the the sound effects everything's great and it creates tension graphically i've got a slight bit of a problem with this game hey did you see that i think Why it could it just be us this weekend i think it kind of borderlines on what's called the uncanny valley Josh. which is where um things that seem too human or like when you try to make like um, robots or graphics if they become too human they become a bit weird to look at and at points this game goes into the uncanny valley particularly with certain characters so, we're in the place. It's where a lot of the action is going to take place, is in this uh, cabin in the middle of the woods. Because that's where teenagers go. So, we're going to... We just saw something outside, so we're going to go around. We've got a little flashing light here. So, we can use the right object to inspect an item. So, we're going to inspect this bottle. Pick 
it up with R2. And I'm going to use the right stick to move it around, which is really quite a nice thing in this game. You can move as, uh, certain items later on. You can move around quite a lot. So these guys have been on the Jeez, whiskey. Josh. <laughs> Once again, brother, you've outdone us oh. all. Not waking up. I've already looked at the whiskey. Is there anything over here? Oh, there's something here. There's a note. Let's pick up this bit of paper. Turn it round. Hannah, you look so damn hot in that shirt, but I bet you even hotter out of it. Come to the guest room at 2 a.m., Mike. Oh my god. What did our naive sister get herself into now? Got your note. Glad you could make it. Says Hannah and Mike. Who might looks like James Franco. Maybe we should start with a little, you know, making out and see where it goes from there. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. And as ever, as a teen horror slasher film inspired by 1970s, oh, your shirt on. we got what? some gratuitous news. Oh, They're all supposed to be friends. Oh, Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. It's what Hannah. horrible people uh, these people are. And I'll tell you what, as you play the game, you, you more so jerks. go, you know these are just horrible Hannah. people. Horrible people in this game. So Hannah's ran out into the woods. She's upset. So what are we going to do? Are we going to wake Josh or are we going to find the others? Let's wake Josh up. Because Josh is her brother as well. Oi, come on. Josh. Josh. Fuck. Josh is having none of it. Guys, there's someone Let's go outside. see what the others. Oh, where is everyone? The there they are. Hannah! What's going uh, on? Where's my sister going? Did they never watch it's Evil fine. Dead? She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Han. What did you do? We just messing around, man. It was a serious. horrible prank to you do on jerks. someone. It was a horrible. Yeah, are Hannah. jerks. They are horrible people. Hannah. Like, I remember when this happened. When I first played this. Me and the wife were going like, oh, we're quite happy with all these characters dying. Yes, Mike. So we got a pre so we got some quick time events in this game. So if you're not a big fan of quick time events, you know you're not going to like them. But it's part of the game. And I think I personally like quick time events. I know a lot of people don't like them, but I think they do work. Do you want to go fast or do you want to go safe? Let's be fast. Because we've got a sister's out in the woods somewhere. So the choices that we kind of make up there later on in the game, they, they will matter. So, follow the noise or follow the footprints? I'm going to follow the footprints because the noise could be anything and the footprints are fresh. So it's probably Hannah. Oh, there's a moose. Or an elk. Is it an elk or a moose? Run away, animal. Jesus! Fuck! Shit! Language is an issue here. This is definitely sort of an 18 rated game. This isn't. This is not a game for the children. So we can use the touchpad to open lock our phone. And which I really liked Hannah. in this is that you can use the phone light to look around. And you can, so you move around with the left and with the right stick we can move this up and down. So let's see if we can find our sister Hannah. Where are you Hannah? Oh! <laughs> First little scare. I'm going to hold L1, move a bit faster. Like, seriously, I, I, as much as I love Hello? my sister, Hello? I wouldn't go out here in the woods like this. Oh, there's a shoe. No, there's not a shoe. These are the totems. So th this is quite a big part of the game. So we're going to pick it up and it will explain what's going on. So I'm going to turn it over and find out what color it is. Dun, dun, dun. Black. We've got a nice cutscene of death. So let's explain the death totems, or the totems. So, um, there are these different totems. There's death, guidance, loss, danger, and fortune. They all come with different colours. And what they do is that um, the first, 
um, so with the black one, uh, the possible death of the person who finds it. Indigenous tribes believe that the butterflies brought dreams and premonitions. Each token foretells a possible future event. How you play with them, whether or not these prophecies come true. As you unlock totems, the event of the past will become unclear. So we can see that we've, as uh, we are currently playing as, I forget her name now, but we've picked up a, um, a totem. And it's basically shown how we could die. So later on in the game, that becomes a little bit more important. Um, also, what we've got while we're here is we've got an explanation of the butterfly effects. So these are all the different things that can happen and the different paths in which things can take. And we've also got the character info. So at the moment, that's it. We're playing as Beth. So we can see Beth's traits here that she's um, honest, charitable. She's not that funny. She's a little bit brave. She's not really romantic, but she's quite a curious person. We can see her relationships with the other characters. So how you interact later on in the game, because you play as pretty much all these characters, and how you interact with the other characters depends on uh, what could happen later in the game. Uh, and then there are the mysteries of the game. So the mysteries of the game are the twins. You find clues about the twins. What happened in 1952. And also as well the mystery man. So that's kind of like our main menu as it were of the game. So we found the death totem. So we know how we might die. So we're going to keep walking. Oh, I pressed L1. Should have pressed... Sorry, I pressed R1. Should have pressed L1. Going to walk a bit faster. I heard some noises there. Keep going through the deepest, darkest woods. In a cabin in the woods. And there's just some random fire going on. Exactly. What the hell is that? There's Hannah. Freezing in the woods. I don't know where she was going to go. Hannah. Oh my god, you must be freezing. Here, take my coat. I'm such an idiot. I'm so dumb. Yes, you are. But what's that? Hannah? something in the woods so we're going to run away I don't think we actually even saw what it was oh Hannah's down come on Hannah and the phone's gone oh no what are we going to do no. near the edge Something's coming. No. He's got night vision. No. And Hannah falls off. Brings Beth with her. What are we going to do? Are we going to save ourselves? Hannah or Beth? Oh, it's fire. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's a man in a gas mask with a mask. And it's horrible. And he's got a flame for it. He's offering a hand. We drop Hannah or let go. Let's drop Hannah. Later, so girl. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to do that. Come on, do some help. No. I'm going to do some my death as well. And there go Hannah and Beth, the twins of the game. So that's the introduction to Until Dawn. Now, one of the other elements we get is it's kind of the game's broken up into chapters, and throughout these chapters, we go with the analyst here. Before we begin, there are a few things I need to make sure you understand. You see, no one can change what happened last year. The past is beyond our control. You have to accept this in order to move forward. But there is freedom in this revelation. Everything you do, every decision you make from now on will open doors to the future. So as you I can see here, we have Peter Stormay from Fargo and some other games Every as well, some other horror films. Um, and he's the analyst, so you. he's kind of explained what goes on. And I think they picked the so perfect guy to play this role. With this, game. this is significant. And I want to help you see it through. Do you? Sometimes. Sometimes these things can be a little scary, even terrifying, but I'm here to make sure that no matter how upsetting things may get, you will always find a way to work through it. Hmm? All right. We will start with a simple exercise. Could you please pick up the card? 
And I want you to look at the picture on the other side and tell me what you feel about it. So this is... It is essential that you answer honestly in order to get the most out of this experience. So this is part of... Um, this is a big part of the game. So let's say the game's kind of broken into chapters and you have these things. Obviously there's gloves. So you don't know who this is you are. So we pick up and we look at these cards. And it's kind of like... I don't know if you remember... Um, I think it was Silent Hill. Was it Shattered Memories? The one that was on the Wii where they kind of done these little um, so, sort of fear questions, as it were. It was kind of like a psychological it assignment because it would give you honor. the most... Uh, it would kind of reflect the game towards you. So how do we feel about this? Does it make me feel happy? It makes me feel uneasy. Okay, well, I'm going to say it makes me feel uneasy. Okay. Honesty is good. What do you think it is that makes you feel uneasy? You. Uh, it's not actually the scarecrow. Um, I'm going to go for the scarecrow this time because I'd done it a little oh, bit I differently see. last time. I've done the house Let's before. See. Also, I'm not the sure. Scarecrow were not there. Would you feel comfortable staying there on your own for a period of time? Let's say a week, for example. A house in the woods? Ah, so in the cornfield? Yeah, why not? Huh. And what if I told you that this cottage was haunted. I'd be scared. Oh. All right, all right. I sense that you suffer from a significant fear of, of the supernatural. What lies beyond the veil of death is, after all, the ultimate unknown. Don't you agree? And what could inspire fear more than the terror of uncertainty please remember this is only a game <laughs> well we seem to be out of time for this session but we'll talk again very soon okay he's probably the best Thing in this game, he's one of the best. That he, he works really well. This guy's underappreciated, isn't that? So he, he does not get enough roles. But it, it's funny with this game because it's kind of it reminds me as a throwback to the old FMV FL, FMV games on CD ROMs. I don't know if people are a bit too old, too young to remember, but games such as Ripper, the X Files game, Phantasmagoria, the Black Dahlia. Um, these games where they had real actors um, playing the roles. And there we have it. That was the tutorial, and we begin the game until dawn. Do I think you should play until dawn? Yes. Is this a game that you can get a lot of replay value out of? Yes, you can do. You know, there are like this whole different endings and all that kind of stuff to it. However, this game, you know what? It's a shame that Blockbusters don't still exist because this is a perfect rental game as far as I'm concerned. This is a great game if you've got a weekend, you want to get through like you know a good game of the weekend, hey, until dawn you're gonna have a great old time with it. Same as well how to heavy rain was as well. Um you know it, it it it's funny because it's um you know narratively like I said before it's kind of a throwback to these old slasher games. Slasher games, slasher films. So it does kind of have like a very Stupid setup. Today is the one year anniversary of the dreadful tragedy that took place on Mount As far as I'm concerned. Thanks for having me, Marty. Listeners, an update on Hannah and Beth Washington, the twins who are still missing. One year ago tonight, and we're about to find out what the setup is. The safety of their parents' lodge and headed individual work. Considering as a person of interest, but his whereabouts are currently unknown. He has an interesting history with the Washington family. He had warned them against pursuing their construction project and claimed the land was sacred to his forefathers. You know, there is still the old sanatorium on the mountain. Could he be hiding there? My officers did search the grounds, but the girls themselves couldn't have made it that far. Something about that mountain seems to breed tragic events. More than you know, Marty. Their son Josh, on this, the anniversary of the mysterious disappearance of Hannah and Beth Washington. Well, hello, friends and fans. 
Alright, let's do that again. Alright, so this is the setup. Alright. Well, hello, friends and fans. It's beyond awesome to have you guys all back this year. Um, first off, I gotta say, I am super excited to welcome and all my pals back to the annual uh, uh, Blackwood I think Winter Getaway. Graphically here, this is how it sort so, of. Um, for me, it just know. dumps into that uh, Uncanny Valley. Because he's a little bit creepy. Address the elephant in the room. Yes, let's address the elephant in the room. I know you're all probably worried about me. And I know it's going to be tough on all of us going back after what happened last year. But. I just want you all to know I'm doing this. And that I know it would mean some quality time. With e each and every one of you and um, just share some moments that we'll never forget for for the sake of my sisters and you know okay so let's party like we're fucking porn stars okay make this one trip we will never forget all right yes <laughs> okay so let's just be clear about what's going on in this story a group of teenagers went to a cabin in the middle of the woods on top of a snowy mountain where there's no one else around. The family that owns it comprises a, a twin, do twin daughters and a son. A man, a man has been warning the family, don't build anything up there, it's sacred land. Okay. The twin girls die, I can't remember if the, uh, the twin girls died and a man is being sought. Okay, so, a little bit strange, a little bit dodgy. This group of teenagers decide to have, because they go here every year, to again go there this year on their own, on the anniversary of the twins' death. I'm just saying that, right? Furthermore, they all travel up there alone. Like, separate from each other. A few of them pair up. But they're all making this journey on their... Foreboding, that is. They're all making this journey on their own. Okay? It's got to be such a cliche story. There's Sam Diligent, consider it adventurous. Um, it's got to be the most cliche story, Hello? perhaps of all time... And I think that's what kind of works with the horror of the game, actually. I think it's a benefit of it. Because you find that when you're playing it, if you've watched a lot of these films, you know what's going to happen. You kind of know what's going to happen. And the problem is, is that you're actually in control of it, so you're trying to stop it. So this game does work really well. But that's basically... This is the start of the game. This is where the game kind of all begins kicking off and whatnot. Um, so yeah, if you like what you see, hey, you're going to really enjoy this. I do recommend this game. Um, I'm writing up my full review about it at the moment. If you're probably reading a review, probably if you're watching this video, you might be uh, watch, uh, reading a review at the same time. Uh, but yeah, so this is Until Dawn. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.